Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second shelf on this second Christmas day, as we say in Germany. Um, Boxing Day, is it? In the US? I always mix up those, but anyway, it's the 26th of December. Um, and I thought I'd do a tag. I'm a little late to the party uh, because I didn't make any videos last week. Um, uh, th this tag was created by Adam, I think, two weeks ago already. Um, Adam from Momentum War. I will leave a link to his original tag video down below. And he also tagged me. But like I said, it was something like two weeks ago. But I thought Christmas, a good way to look back at the year because it's the book postscript 2018 tag in which Adam came up um, with a couple of prompts uh, looking back at your reading year. So let's get started. And prompt number one is the longest book you read this year and the book that took you the longest. And in my case, that's two different books. Um, the longest book is this one, um, Middle March by George Eliot. Um, I talked about this book in last Sunday in my recent reads video. So if you want to hear more about it and why I loved it so much, um, you can check out that video from last Sunday if you haven't watched it yet. Um, and this book in my edition has 919 pages. So it was definitely the longest book that I read in 2018. But it was not the book that took me the longest. The book that took me the longest was Jennifer Egan, Manhattan Beach, which came out last year in 2017. Um, and if I count my various attempts to read this book, it took me from September last year until April this year, because I uh, started reading it last year when it came out. I didn't finish it. I DNF'd it. Um, and then th this year in the spring, um, the book was nominated uh, it was on the Man Booker long list, so I, because I always try to read the long list and make videos about it, I restarted the book, uh, and oh boy, it was a struggle. It's uh, a historical fiction um, set in, around the time of World War II. It starts earlier, but the main story is around world in in the time of world war ii and we have a main our main character annie whom we meet um earlier when she's younger when she's 12 and then when the story starts uh, during world war ii uh, she's becoming one of the first female divers uh, which sounds interesting and then we have a whole array of of people and plots and gangsters and bootleggers and i don't know what and it, that all sounds really interesting, but boy, oh boy, did this book bore the living daylight out of me. It, I finished it finally in April um, because I wanted to finish it in order to make, you know, a video. But no, no, it, it's not for me. <laughs> anyway, prompt number two, a book you read in 2018 that was outside of your comfort zone. I mean, Adam. Since when are we talking about comfort zones? Next thing you know, you will light candles in your videos. Uh, I always struggle with this, you know, reading outside of your comfort zone. I, I read, um, I, I, I'm not limited to a particular genre or, or, or type of book. Uh, so I, I have, I don't have a comfort zone really, but I'm, rather old so I have developed a taste I know what I like and what I don't like so if this prompt means that I read a book in a in a genre or in a style that I would normally read uh, then I I chose where is it here is it um, this one Alice Thompson uh, the book collector because it's a it's set in Edwardian England, um, and the main character is a young woman who marries a, a, a rich lord, and then something strange happens. He collects books, and there's one book which is really weird, and she, the, the woman, you know, uh, has to go to, into a mental institution. But it's gothic, and I, I'm just not into that. Uh, I read this for a read-along, I think it was by Mercedes, the, the autumn read-along or something, or read-a-thon, and one of the prompts was a read a horror or a gothic uh, story, so I picked this up um, to, to read it for this prompt, and I I liked it okay, but the, the, the gothic horror 
genre is it's just not my thing but if you're into it this is certainly a very good pick uh prompt number three i i look down because i have have the prompts written here how many books did you reread in 2018 not that many only five um i'm i'm if you're following my channel for any length of time you know that that i'm not very good uh with rereading i always try to be better because there's so many books that i read in the past that i really enjoyed and would want to reread but somehow uh, I I never follow up. Maybe maybe next year. Maybe a good uh, you know something to try to do better next year. But anyway, five books. Uh, I reread two Virginia Woolf novels, Mrs. Dalloway, um, because uh, Kendra over at Kendra Winchester she did a read along of Mrs. Dalloway uh, uh, in the course of a whole month, which was fantastic. Um, if I can find it, I will leave a link uh, to it down below. Uh, so I reread that and then I reread The Waves of Virginia Woolf in, I think, in November or Dece December. Uh, I reread uh, The Stone Sky, uh, the last uh, book in, in the series by N.K. Jemison, which I really loved. So I reread at least one book that I really loved uh, in 2018. Um, and I reread uh, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers because the third uh, book in the series came out and I and the third book has a closer connection to the first book in the series so that's why I reread re the first book um, and like I said the book collector that I just showed you for for this uh, read along that was also a reread because I read this uh, had read this I think last year or the year before last so five books in total which is not a lot I think um, prompt number four, the favorite reread of 2018, and that was uh, the one I mentioned, uh, Becky Chambers, uh, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Um, it was, I mean, I love Mrs. Dalloway, and I love the, uh, I think The Waves is brilliant, but why I picked this one, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, because I liked this book better when I reread it than the first time I read it. Um, Maybe because um, I didn't have any expectations anymore. I knew the plot. It's it's a, a big, you know, uh, sci-fi saga uh, happening mostly on a spaceship and a, a crew of uh, humans and non-humans. They travel together to this small angry planet because they have to build some sort of wormhole highway thingy and I, I forgot the technicalities and the the book is mainly the journey and the characters there is not that much plot and maybe that put me off the first time because as you know I'm always looking you know mainly for the story but the second time I got more engaged with the characters and I, I really liked the the different characters and especially the non-human uh, uh, characters in the book and because I was looking forward to the to the third uh, uh, book in the series and that connection I don't know I'm, I'm just making things up as I go I don't know I, I really liked the reread <laughs> <laughs> that that's basically the main thing um then let me check then prompt number five a book that you read for the first time in 2018 uh and that you look forward to reread in the future with all you know my non-rereading but one book that i read in 2018 that i would really really w uh, want to reread is elena zuma's red clocks um, which came out in, in 2018. It's a, uh, a dis sort of dystopian, um, I wouldn't call it sci-fi, but it's a dystopian fiction set in the US in the near future <clears throat> where some of the, uh, if you want to call it accomplishments of, uh, you know, Roe versus Wade and uh, reproduction rights have been uh, a, a abandoned abolished so you can't have an abortion um, it's very difficult for a, a single uh, woman to adopt um, and the the book f then follows uh, five characters women who all struggle in different ways with this new re uh, reality 
Um, and I thought it uh, the the atmosphere was brilliant. The the way uh, Leni Zumas gave these characters um, very uh, own distinctive voices and depth and nuance in in the way she describes the story was good how in the end all of these characters were intertwined which you then learn uh, I, I really loved it and it I, I thought it was a book that you probably if you reread it you get more of the of the characters um, uh, than the, the first time so I would really love to reread it to make a long story short uh, problem number six, the favorite single short story on a novella that you read in 2018. Uh, and that uh, was also difficult because I read a, quite some really, really good novellas, but I'll go for Martha Wells' uh, The Murderbot Diaries. Uh, and I picked the first one, uh, All Systems Read, uh, which is about 150 pages. Um, and I, I love it. It's the, 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 the Murderbot Diaries now has four, four books uh, in it. And this, like I said, is the first. Um, and the main character is an android. Uh, so an, an artificial intelligence in a partly human, partly robotic uh, body um, who is a security unit. So he is uh, contracted by you know, humans in order to provide security. Um, he, uh, he I, I always say he, I don't know why, but he has a troubled past. He did something in the past which caused the death of uh, uh, 10 or 20 humans. That's why he calls himself Murderbot. And he is quirky and difficult in, in the sense that he has difficulties with himself. He is um, has anxieties when interacting with humans and he is funny in not ha ha funny but you know this subtle humor um, when he is talking about himself I, I, I just I, I love that him as a character um, and the first one I picked the first one in the series I could have picked any of the of the four books but I pick the first one so th that that is the murder bot is really um, I, I, I think he's great um, then number seven, Mass Appeal, a book you liked and would recommend to a variety of people. And for that, I'll pick uh, this one, Sana Krasikov, The Patriots, uh, which came out a couple of years ago, but which I read only uh, this year. In, in this is already the uh, paperback edition. Um, uh, it's um, a sweeping story, multi-generational story, starting... Uh, in the Depression era in Brooklyn, um, a young woman who is just in her late teens, early 20s in the Depression, and she decides to immigrate uh, to Russia. First, you know, only temporary, and then she stays there, and we follow her story, the story of her son, and the story of her uh, grandchild. Um, so it's from the 1930s up to... Um, the start of this millennium, so it spans about 70 years and three generations. It's atmospheric, really well written. Um, it gives you insight into the life of people in Russia during those various times, but also about the politics of the, uh, the, the pre-World War II years and then the Cold War years. Uh, and it's also very entertaining. So I would, I think I could recommend this book to a variety of readers, whether they are into historical fiction or whether they are into family uh, histories or multi-generational tales. For all of those people, this would be a perfect uh, read. Uh, then from number eight, a specialized appeal, a book that you liked uh, but uh, would be hesitant to recommend just to anyone. And for this, I go with Wendy Mitchell, somebody I used to know, uh, a memoir. Uh, first of all, unfortunately, uh, not that many people really enjoy reading nonfiction. So that's already, 
you know, a, pr a problem in recommending this book because it's nonfiction. And second of all, Wendy Mitchell, uh, she is, uh, she lives in the UK and she uh, suffers from early onset Alzheimer's. So she was in her late fifties when her when the disease um, uh, started, and she describes how she deals with it, how what what it meant, how it manifests itself, and how she tries to uh, maintain um uh self sufficiency but also independence uh, and it's a it's a it's a positive tale in a way but of course it's also heartbreaking and i wouldn't you know recommend this just to anybody because first of all not any everybody wants to read about alzheimer's um and not everybody is interested in this kind of very personal memoir but it's it's i think it's a really good book it's a really interesting book it's an it enlightens um, you at least it enlightened me about the disease and what you can do about it and how the uh, medical profession reacts to the disease um so it it's it's absolutely something that i would recommend but not to not to everybody um, prompt number, let me see, prompt number nine. Um, reflect on your year as bookish content creator. Goals, videos you made, videos you liked, positive and negative things. Um, uh, and I think that one of the goals that I set myself is to make two videos a week, one on Sunday, one on Wednesday. And I did pretty well. Uh, there were weeks when I didn't film because I, I just couldn't find the time or I was traveling. But overall, I'm, I, I think I'm happy with, with the way that this year, uh, that, that I did this year with uh, videos that I had sort of, um, you know, some uh, recurring videos, my recent reads videos on Sunday, that I do the TBR to be released. Uh, each month looking at new releases. So these sort of established um, formats I'm, I'm really happy with. Um, I also don't struggle anymore to keep my videos under 10 minutes because I, I just can't. I'm just waffling too much. So they're longer, but obviously people don't mind. They still watch it, which I think is great. Uh, I really love the way that uh, my viewers interact with me. Um, I always get a lot of comments and I try to answer all of them. Um, I, I really like that. Um, favorite videos. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like the, the discussion videos also. I made a couple of them when I'm really trying to engage in a certain topic and maybe I want to do more of those next year, but overall, um, I'm, I'm satisfied with, the videos I, I made and the amount of videos and that it's consistent uh, twice a week. Um, and the last prompt is tag some fellow bookish content creators. And because this tag has been around for a while and a lot of people already did it and th those videos are fantastic. So I'm not going to tag a single one, but I'm just going to tag everybody who hasn't been tagged yet. And please do this video. I hope you're enjoying your Christmas. Uh, if you're celebrating, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. Talk to me as always down in the comments. I'm looking forward to that and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.